Hello, my friends. I took the Learn 2D Game Dev course, and I want to tell you if it's worth it. I've been wanting to get into Godot for a while now. I made my first game with Construct 3, and I said, you know what? I kind of know programming. I really want to try to get into a program that requires some programming. And the reason for that, I'll go into a little bit later, but that's uh, neither here nor there, because we are talking about GD Quest's Learn 2D Game Dev course, which is $84, definitely not free. So with this not free price tag, you are getting a plethora of fantastic content. But let me let me back up here just a little bit. So let's say that you're like, Dylan, what in the heck are you even talking about? What's a GD Quest? What's a 2D game dev? I don't even know what anything is. That's okay. You just calm down, grab some popcorn. You know, it's good. I won't, I'll turn it into brain rot a little bit for you, but just kind of just chill out for me. So take a seat right over there, get comfy. Let me tell you some things right here. If you're like me and you're trying to transition into Godot, you probably are looking for the highest quality content that you can find. And well, for me, that has been GD Quest. So when I found out that they had a paid course and it was definitely more than I thought, but it's an early bird special. So if you buy it now as of October, whatever is on the screen right now, you're gonna get it for that price. However, let's say that you really don't want it right now because you want to wait until it's finished. Awesome, cool. You're gonna be waiting a little bit because currently in its state as it is, wow, that is a bunch of stupid words to make a sentence. It is about halfway done. So there is a lot of content that is not in this program. Okay, cool. I'm talking about the fact that there isn't a ton of content in the program, but it wants to be paid for. Okay, where's the positive in this? And let me try to explain this here, because what I feel this course does, it does a lot of things right, but it also does just a few things wrong that are a little bit irritating to a specific type of person. But you know, let's talk about who this course is designed for. So this course is absolutely designed for people who know a little bit of programming and have definitely messed with some games before. If you're super new, if you've never done any programming in your life, you are going to have a horrible time with, with this program. Program? With this program, just trust me, it's going to be kind of rough. What I really like about this program is GD Quest kind of takes it from a super beginner perspective. That's not the right word. Perspective. <laughs> There it is. They take it from a super beginner perspective. And by that, I mean, they talk about the mindset of a programmer. They talk about, um, you know, all this other programming stuff. And then they give you this free program that you can kind of do. Uh, let's let's back up, man. I'm not really explaining myself here. Okay, so GD Quest, what is this program? GD Quest Learn 2D Game Dev is an $84 early bird special program where it teaches the fundamentals of the Godot engine. And it also teaches how to make 2D games. For myself, that's all I'm interested in. I just want to make 2D games. There's really nothing else that I want to do but make 2D games. I was like, okay, that's fantastic. 84 bucks, I can learn to make 2D games. Wonderful. I didn't do a bunch of research. I knew that it was like a still in development type thing. I didn't know how far along it was. And I was just like, okay, you know, whatever happens, happens. I'll just go with it. I finally get in. Fantastic. I have made it into the GD Quest program. And I want to talk about my experience through this. So before I recommend anything, before I really give anything, well, actually, you know what? I am going to give a little bit. I'm not going to do that video trope where it's like, watch till the end. And then you'll know what my answer is. Aha. I'm going to tell you up front, just right here. This, this is it right here. If you want to close the video off after this, you go for it. I will be mildly disappointed, but I guess I'll never find out, right? Here's what I would say. This course is for you if you have programming fundamentals, if you've made a game before, and if you're mildly comfortable with game engines, this course is going to be a really good kind of quick jump into the editor and programming within Godot in general. However, if you're new to programming, if you've never made a game before, God forbid you've never programmed before and you're trying to take this course as your starter one, you're going to have a horrible time. And I'm saying that only halfway through the actual finished course because the sections that I've gotten to, if I were newer, if I had not gone through about six to seven months of like doing JavaScript every day, I would have a lot of issues with this course. So breaking it down, if you're super new, don't pick this course. If you're kind of an intermediate or maybe a little bit more than a novice, you'll pick this course and you'll probably have a pretty good time. But I'm going to talk about my personal experience. So I nabbed it, 84 bucks, cool beans. I didn't really know much about the Godot editor. I had taken some time and I had made that little like 2D game that you can make on the docks online, dodge the creeps or whatever it is. I made that. So I had a super basic understanding of Godot. I know that it used no. I knew that it had pretty easy scripting, kind of like a Python JavaScript 
hybrid, way better than Unity IMO, and it just kind of worked nice. It's really lightweight. I can run it on my Mac, and I don't have to sacrifice a ton of space to run it. So it felt really nice kind of having such a lightweight program, and I like the editor on the inside too, so it all, it all kind of works pretty good. I didn't know much about this editor at all, and to be honest, I'm a huge noob when it comes to making games, so I very much had an open mind when approaching this because I want to learn as much as I can. I've tried to glean as much as I can from playing games and from studying and making my own little projects. You never really know what you're going to get. You never know what god awfully bad habits you might be making. So I wanted to see how how somebody who is seasoned would approach this. And it starts off right away with the first three modules not being much more than text based. And that's a little frustrating for me. So your first three modules, it starts off with an introduction that talks about the course. The second one I think talks about a programmer's mindset. And then number three gets into a free app that they have, which I think is called GD Script or something like that. Don't remember, it's probably on the screen right now. And that's super cool. I would say if you're thinking about doing this program or if you just want a really quick basic refresher on GD Script, jump into this. It's fantastic. However, they are using this as a, you can start as a beginner and know how to program by the time you get to the actual modules. And I'm gonna be honest with you, I don't think that works at all. And the reason I don't think it works is because by the time you're getting to arrays, you're getting to dictionaries, and you're not comfortable with setting a key, or you're not comfortable with retrieving a value from an array, or if you look at an array and you still go, why the heck isn't my number one item number one, and why is it zero? I'm gonna tell you right now, you're gonna have a lot of issues. Just keep that in mind. However, for somebody that has programmed before and has made programs within other languages, this was a great refresher for me. It was nice to kind of see what the engine is, what you can do with it, and stuff like, you know, vector twos, that was a little confusing to me, but you can get into that a little bit later. Awesome. Okay, the first three modules are just kind of whatever, but module four is where it really starts to kick up. Now, module four is where they kind of dive into the editor super hard. So it talks about making scenes. It talks about your scene tree, your nodes. It talks about vector twos. It talks about moving the player ship. And that's really cool because at that point, I had done a lot of reading. I had done a lot of typing. And I was like, you know what? I'd like to have something to show for it. And we start off with a pretty cool little ship scene. There's nothing much more to it besides the fact that we are just giving it direction, we're giving it velocity. And I did find a little bit of confusion here, and this is just for me, because while vector twos are just an X and a Y position, I found myself getting confused because they're also able to like make velocity from the direction or something like that. Some of the math I found gets a little confusing to me, <laughs> and that might just be because I suck at math, but. I don't know. What I would say is this module does go into some kind of complicated programming terms, especially if you've never done movement code like this before. Even as somebody who has done it before, this was a little confusing to me. I was able to get the understanding of it, but I did have to do some extra research. And what I will say is this program heavily encourages that. They give you a lot of links to different articles that you can read or even to the docs. Modal 4. Really is just getting comfortable with the editor. There's a little bit of, uh, little bit of, little bit of stuff going on. It's nothing crazy. It is a very heavy editor type module and that's okay. Modal. On the other hand, is where things start to pick up a little bit more. By the time we get to module two, they expect that you know the editor kind of okay. They expect that you kind of know how to program some things, and now it's time to start adding things. So what's really cool is they teach you how to do a spawn random items within the game screen. And if you're making any kind of like random loot, or if you're making like a vampire survivor brotato type thing, this is gonna be great because you can carry this into any code that you're making. And another plus for this in what I like that they're doing is why while we are moving a ship, it is still technically top-down movement. So you would easily be able to have this go over to a survival game or even a driving game if you wanted to. So when we get to module five, I think this is probably my favorite module currently. And that's that's not hard considering the first three weren't anything to really talk about. But module five goes into spawning things in the map. It goes into talking more about player code and something that I really enjoyed, which I didn't expect to enjoy, was the fact that they do a lot with tweening. And when I did Construct 3, I didn't understand the power of tweening until the end of my project, which <laughs> of course, that's how it's gonna go, right? Well, Godot does a great thing with tweening where it's kind Kind of like a single shot use every time you use it yeah, in special cases you can obviously do other stuff and chain them together but it's very much like if you have an item that's spawned and you want it to move up and down heck yeah you just fire off a tween when the thing is created and it's only a few lines it's really nothing that bad one thing that i noticed 
And if, if you're a new programmer, if you look at code and it, it, you're almost trying to demystify it because it feels so like godlike or like you'll, you're like, how do they do this? How will I ever understand how to do this? It's just so complicated. I don't really look at programming as complicated anymore, more so that it's really just kind of a almost barbaric way to approach doing things. And I don't mean that in like a negative way. I mean the fact that like you're having to just, just, just do everything at the base, like one line at a time, where if you were using a visual editor, you would do like two clicks and you'd have something tween from left to right. But if you're doing that in like Godot or something, you're gonna be writing multiple lines because you're doing each step. And I think once you can demystify programming to really just be super basic instructions, more so than like this mystical black hole of magic that just made your character run around, it's just tiny little, little tiny program, programmatical steps. And that really helped me. Anyways, that was a huge tangent. Tweening. So they go into tweening on this one, and there isn't too much to say about Modal 5, besides the fact that it's a really good module, it builds upon the last one, it teaches even more, and I felt very confident coming out of it. However, going into Module 7, which is loot at all, I think, no, um, Module 6, not Module 7, whoops. So Module 6 kind of moves away from the top-down spaceship game, and it goes into a mouse-driven, like, chest random spawner thing, which is cool, but it does very much feel disjointed to me, kind of just like immediately dropping everything that we did in the space thing, space thing uh, and moving to that. And I'd like to also mention the fact that in the first module with the ship, for somebody like myself, I do like to know how all of the little things are working and how it's coming together. I feel like I feel like it would be better for, for this course to start constructing the scenes from the beginning instead of it being given to you and then it's just an overload of information. Personally, I just think that would be a little bit better. However, we go into this new module and it's very mouse driven, which is cool because it's good to know about that, obviously. But it kind of runs a little bit more with the tweening. It runs a little bit more with the instantiating or randomly spawning items. And it shows off a very powerful feature with the tweening by the fact that you can literally make like basic, very quick animations with tweening and like the editor within Godot. And I thought that was awesome because doing stuff like that in Construct was always kind of a pain in the butt. It wasn't bad, but it was just a lot of steps to do one simple thing. And I was genuinely surprised at how easy it was to create like a chest animation by just like doing a couple of keyframes. I was like, hey, I've done keyframes so much in like Premiere and Final Cut. I get this stuff, man. Mm. Excuse me. So up to this point, I haven't had too many negatives. I, I know I'm nitpicking a little bit on some things, but it's a pretty solid course overall. However, when we get to module seven, I think this is where I start to personally have some issues with the course. If you are at all new to programming, this is the section of this course that is gonna just probably frustrate you the most. This is where the, the spaceship, the mouse movement is kind of thrown out the window and we're now introduced to a a dialogue system. And that's really cool. You know, Undertale was super popular with its dialogue system. So yeah, a lot of people probably want to do some kind of dialogue system. It goes into how to play text with it, how to make it appear, how to animate it. It's really cool stuff. However, it dives pretty deep into arrays. And at the end of this module, it dives even deeper into dictionaries. While I understand the use for them, I do feel like this course starts to teeter on the, oh man, this data structure stuff is a lot and we're not doing enough with it to justify how much we're learning about it. That's kind of where I feel like this one's at. Again, if I didn't have previous programming experience with arrays or dictionaries, this would have been confusing for me. I would have had no idea what I was doing. Maybe somebody else out there would have an easier time, but for me, it would have been so confusing for me to come up to all these array things and figuring out how to grab the last one from an array or just pull one or just all these little chaining things that you just have to learn slowly over time. Unfortunately, this is compounded by the fact that module eight is module seven, but just way harder because this is the dictionary module. I mean, they don't waste any time just groveling at dictionaries. And that's cool because dictionaries are 
pretty freaking great. And they show how great they are. But again, I do feel like this was, this was just a lot of like raw information without too much like visceral feedback from it. And I just felt a little disjointed and I was like, okay, can we move on to something else? Because I feel like I'm just cramming knowledge in my head for this and not having much to show because it, it goes deep into making your own classes and your resources. And that's cool. I know I, I can see exactly how that would be useful, but I do feel like this should have been way later on or something. Cause it just feels, it just feels too much this early on in the course. The irony being that the next module, module nine is all about top-down movement. The other unfortunate thing with that is the fact that it's not done. As of this recording, there's nine lessons in the module out of 10. So there's a warning that kind of tells you to wait until it's finished to, to get the full experience. So I'm still waiting for that. So this is where my journey came to an end. $84 and you get a lot of content. Now, one thing I will say is there is a lot of content here. What I do like is GD Quest provides this like roadmap of when they're planning to release stuff and the length of these courses. I will say, I feel like the length of these courses are just completely just somebody looked at it and they said, yeah, there's no way, even with all the optional challenges, even with all like the studying that I was doing during these, I was not even hitting like the lower tier of these like hours that I was supposed to spend on a course, just FYI. But there's a lot of courses planned for this and it's awesome. Like the amount of content and the professionalism that they're putting into this. However, it is definitely not finished. It definitely has a lot to go, a lot to go. Definitely has a lot farther to go until I feel like its price is justified. Right now, I, I do feel like I got my money's worth out of it to an extent. Had module nine been finished, maybe I would have felt a little bit better on that. But I, I learned a lot from this. And I would say out of a lot of the tutorials and content that I've checked for Godot, this is a very thorough one. And I feel confident enough to jump into my own game after making this, which is what I plan to do a little like survival game where you play as like a farmer and then like you get all these different random abilities. Like you can plant bombs, you can plant bombs and stuff. Yeah, it's just stupid stuff like that. So I'm gonna make a little top down thing. and. That's what I really appreciate about this. Whoa, that's what I really appreciate about this. Good God, I can't. <laughs> can't talk today. I really appreciate that it does instill a lot of good habits. And by good habits, I mean, they really focus on type checking during these modules. And I think that's important, especially as a beginner, because when I started, it would be so easy to make variables, to make functions and just kind of let it, you know, let it figure itself out, not worry about it too much, but going a little bit slower, knowing that what I'm passing in here is an integer or what I'm passing in here is a node 2D. It helps a lot with the errors and it helps me to slow down, to think, and to not just kind of rush through it. I appreciate that. And I think the course does a wonderful job of giving good habits. I do think just for $84 and the fact that there's so much content left, it is very hard to justify it. Now, if you have some expendable income, you want a really quick refresher or kind of like crash course into Godot just to get started, this will definitely do it for you. I feel so much more comfortable in that editor than I, than I I'm, I'm even surprised that I feel as comfortable as I do. It just feels very second nature from the way that they do it. I think it's great. I learned a lot. I definitely would not recommend this to anybody who is new to programming or who hasn't done a couple months of programming. This will throw you through such a loop. Functions, anonymous functions. I was so surprised when they threw that in there. That was something that I only did after like five months of JavaScript and I, I got it pretty quick, but <laughs> not to pat myself on the back, but I got it pretty quick after doing functions. But I could definitely see that one just going over people's heads. Like if you're new to programming, you're never going to remember to do an anonymous function. You'll be like, how the hell do I do that again? So that's my only complaint. There it is. That's my thing. If you would like to watch more videos, game dev vlog is coming soon. I'm whatever the survival farmer thing is. I don't know. <laughs>